Hello geographers and welcome to another lesson from the Changing China unit. In this lesson we're going to answer this question. Is Shenzhen a miracle city? So this is a major city in China and we're going to identify the main reasons for its growth but also, also the impacts of the growth. So as you can see on our learning journey this lesson is number seven. We've already looked at China's geographical features, which we've attempted to map. We've considered China's population and how it's changed over time. We've also looked at how China got rich and considered the Belt and Road Initiative. We're now going to really think about its urban growth. So make sure you've got a pen, pencil, ruler and pen and something to write on. Um, perhaps you want your notebook or some paper. First of all, write down today's title, Is Shenzhen a Miracle City? and underline with a ruler. And then make sure you've got today's date written into your notes. So the first thing I'd like you to try and do is write a couple of sentences to describe the location of Shenzhen in China. So you can see it's right down here on the south coast of China. So have a go at writing a short description. When you've done that, I'd like you to think about why that location is likely to be significant in terms of helping it to become a big major city. It might help you to look in an atlas and look very clearly about what's surrounding the area of Shenzhen as well. So pause the video and take a moment to do that task. So your description then may have included the following points. Shenzhen is located near the coast of southeast China, in the province of Guangdong, bordering Hong Kong to the south. It's also located on the east bank of the Pearl River estuary. So those would be two good sentences describing where Shenzhen is. You may want to add to your own descriptions. The second thing I asked you to consider was why its location may have been important for its economic growth. So one of the things you might have noticed is its coastal location and that would therefore allow it to be ready and primed to not only send out but also receive products from around the world. You might have also noticed its proximity to Hong Kong. This was an area that was under the British rule until 1997 so it operated under quite a different economic system. So that may well be something that's pivotal that we'll come back to later in Shenzhen's growth. Now I'm going to go through a little bit of background about Shenzhen and also get you to write down a key term that's going to be important. So Shenzhen has basically undergone, undergone a total transformation. Shenzhen in 1979 was home to around 300,000 people. It was originally an isolated fishing village with many using it as a point to illegally migrate across to Hong Kong, an area that was controlled by the British and therefore had a very different system of government and economic reform. From the 1980, Shenzhen was soon to change, becoming a megacity of 12.5 million by 2019, and that was just in the time of 40 years. So a megacity is when the settlement has more than 10 million inhabitants. I suggest you pause the video and note down that key term. Now Shenzhen was established as the first special economic zone and this meant that it offered low tax rates, low land rates, workers with very low wages and the freedom to operate without approval from the central government. And we examined this quite a lot, the idea of special economic zones, a couple of lessons ago. So you might want to go back to that lesson if you've forgotten about the special economic zones. As a result though, the special economic zone status, Shenzhen has become a hub for foreign investment and manufacturing. The city is home to many factories that produce electronics, textiles and other goods for export. And this has helped to spur economic growth and create jobs for the local population. Now I'd suggest you want to try and have a look at this uh, website from The Guardian as it shows some wonderful pictures about how the area used to look and how the area looks now because it really does illustrate a massive transformation. So I might actually be able to show you. I'll just have a quick check. <laughs> so yeah, this is the website. So you might want to have a quick look through 
this website from The Guardian. So you can see some of the satellite images and you're able to click through, I think it's on this one. So this shows you the region on a satellite image and then you're able to go back and look like what it is now in terms of the massive amount of development that you can see there on that image. Okay, let's keep going. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to watch a short video clip to get a bit more of an idea of what Shenzhen is like. So what I want you to try and identify while you watch the video is why it is people might be attracted to live in Shenzhen. So if you were a resident in Shenzhen, what would it be like? So write down a few ideas in that column. In the other side of the column, I'd like you to think about why businesses would want to operate in Shenzhen. And we've already identified a few ideas because of its status as a special economic zone. So in that one, I want you to list down some of the key reasons why businesses would want to operate in Shenzhen. When you've watched the video clip, come back online and have a look through some of the suggested ideas. It's, it's often said in China, if you want to see the past, it... So some of the, tra the attractions then of Shenzhen. For people that live in Shenzhen, there are a variety of different places that they can live in. They've got year-round sunny weather, there's golf courses and theme parks and plenty of open green spaces. There's nightlife and a whole variety of jobs. If you're a business, you can benefit from the major transport links that allow you to import and export your products. The SEZ allows you to pay a very minimal amount of tax. There's a large supply of labour because lots of people have chosen to live there. And also there's access to business loans through various banks and financial institutions. So hopefully this has begun to give you a bit more of an idea about Shenzhen. I'm now going to very briefly refer to different elements of Shenzhen in terms of its industry, its social challenges and the urban and environmental transformation. Now what I suggest you do is that you actually print off the next three slides. This information will then help you to answer a series of questions on the slide that follows. So on this slide, this goes through about Shenzhen's industry with an initial focus on producing low value goods like clothing and toys. Nowadays, Shenzhen's industry is very much focused on the high tech market and is becoming a world leader in things like AI and autonomous driving. So this is a complete change in terms of what's happened in terms of industry, but clearly manufacturing was important in starting that first level of progress. This next slide considers the social challenges of living and working in Shenzhen. So obviously the growth of Shenzhen has very much been reliant on the migrants coming from the countryside locations to work in these manufacturing areas. However, quite often the migrants find that their wages are low and they therefore can't find houses to live in. Instead, they're offered places in dormitories, which is shared accommodation with other workers. So you might want to have a think about how difficult it would be to live in such situations. They also often have limited access to healthcare because of a rule known as hukou, which affects whether or not they can access those sorts of things. This third and final slide here on this section of learning is all to do with how the urban um, and environmental landscape has been changed. So it focuses on the public transport and also the fact that we've got electric transportation for a large part of the public transport. It links also to some of the sustainable measures in terms of things like rainwater harvesting and solar panels. So as I say, I strongly suggest you have a good look through those slides or maybe print them off so that you're then able to answer these questions. So the questions you're going to answer are, number one, how did Shenzhen change from a small fishing village to a modern city? What factors contributed to this transformation? Secondly, what are some of the socio-economics? So social is to do with people, economics to do with money. So what are the benefits that have emerged as a result of Shenzhen's transformation? So how have people and how have businesses or transport links benefited? What are some of the challenges facing people living in Shenzhen? So focus specifically on the migrants that have come to work here in Shenzhen. Number four, what are foreign investors and multinational corporations? 
What have they done in terms of playing a role in Shenzhen's transformation? What measures has the city taken to address environmental sustainability? So have a work through those five questions. And if you've got time, you might want to think back to the original question of the lesson. Think back to the idea of Shenzhen being a miracle city. What would be your idea of a miracle city? In what way might Shenzhen be classed as a miracle city? So that's your challenge to do if you've got time. So pause the video now and work through those five questions using the information on the preceding three slides to help you. And then I'll be back in a moment to go through the answers with you. OK, let's have a look at what you got then. So for number one, Shenzhen in 1979 was home to 300,000 people and it was an isolated fishing village. But in 1979, it was established as China's first special economic zone that offered low tax rates, low land rates and workers with very low wages and freedom to operate without approval from the central government. So this really does illustrate how Shenzhen was able to go under a huge transformation into its modern city now. Number two was asking about the major benefits that have occurred. So with an investment from foreign firms, there is a wide variety of jobs available from light manufacturing to high tech innovation and research industries. The city has grown dramatically and now boasts a world class transport system to make it easier to get around the city. So transports and jobs had enabled us to get a variety of benefits from Shenzhen. Number three, what are the challenges? Well, many of the workers are migrants from rural areas who can only access limited healthcare and education services due to the Huku registration policy. They also lack the money to pay for rents in the city, so they live in dormitories with other workers on the factory sites. Even those who are highly skilled struggle to afford apartments because they are over 40 times the average salary. Let's look at the remaining two questions. So number four was asking about the foreign investors and the multinational corporations and what role they've played. Well, as a result, the special economic zone, Shenzhen has become a hub for foreign investment and manufacturing. So it's attracting a lot of it. The city is home to many factories that produce electronics and textiles and other goods for export. And this has helped to spur economic growth and create jobs for the local population. There are over four million employed in manufacturing and over 2 million employed in high-tech industries. Lastly, question five was asking if we've got examples of measures to show environmental sustainability. And there have been a number of measures that have been put in place. All of its public buses in Shenzhen are electric, and the city is now working to electrify its taxi fleet and also private vehicles. It's implemented a number of other measures such as green rooftops, rainwater harvesting and solar panels on buildings to improve the overall sustainability. So hopefully that's given you a really good idea about the city of Shenzhen. So the final thing for you to have a think about are these three questions. What do you think the future of Shenzhen will look like? So really try and break that down socially in terms of where are people going to live? And perhaps think about the industry. Is it going to be a market leader in things like AI and robotics and healthcare? Are there things that we can learn from Shenzhen's experience? What has it done to enable it to become so massively transformed? And is that something that other countries may want to aspire to or not? And lastly, remember the overall question. Is Shenzhen an example of a miracle city? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. And I'll leave it there. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.